What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. This is a video that I've been wanting to do for quite some time now, but I'm finally getting to it. And it's something that's been on my mind uh, to talk about. But, you know, when I initially saw the clip, it was years before I even started doing YouTube. But now that I have this platform, it's a, a topic that I wanted to talk about. And it has to do with Kobe Bryant's uh, story or how he sees how the Kobe and Shaq split happened and Shaq going to Miami and him going back to L.A. Take a listen. I was gonna talk, man. I was gonna choke the, the hair out of this country. See, you know, the thing about that is, I didn't get any of that because we were looking for homes. Right. We we're actually looking for homes in Chicago, researching schools, um, places to live. So that was true. You were gonna go to the Bulls. Yeah, it was a story in ESPN. I think it was ESPN magazine, and they asked you a question about me and Penny. And you said that we're essentially the same. I looked at that. And I said, uh, no. We're not. But I think you took that the wrong way because of all the all the misquotes and all the bad stuff. I probably did. And I probably I probably use his motivation too. Yeah. Saying, listen, if, if this is a conversation, I don't want this conversation. When I retire, I don't want people to say, okay, he only won because of Shaq. As unfair as that is, Magic never won without Cat. Right? Michael never won without Scotty. So but here I am getting stuck with this argument which is not fair, but yet this is the argument people will make, and I'm not okay with that. And so therefore, I knew, okay, I gotta, I gotta go. I had actually heard that, but I didn't believe it. Oh, yeah. So, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so, we, we're looking for places in Chicago, man. We are, we're flying up there to meet with Ryan's door. You wanna leave, you wanna leave sunny California to go to cold ass Chicago. I mean, that's the signed off on moving out to, uh, I think it was Lake Forest, I think it was, Chicago. And uh, went on a vacation to Italy. I got a phone call, Rob Palenka called me. And he said, Shaq just requested a trade. I was like, well, there goes Chicago. There's, there's no way the Lakers are gonna lose me and Shaq in the same year. But you know what I love about the great Dr. Jerry Buss? He called me and said, hey, you're aging. Of course, I know you want the money, but I can't lose this guy. I'm gonna start all over. It's certainly a disappointing day in a lot of ways in Los Angeles. Kobe Bryant is generally a guy that is considered as someone who keeps it a hundred, keeps it a buck, tells it to you straight how it is, doesn't care if you like it or if you don't like it, doesn't sugarcoat anything. But Kobe Bryant has had his moments of capping and I have called him out for some of those reasons on other YouTube videos I have put out. You saw the clip. You heard what he said, how Kobe is painting this picture and telling his story is kind of twisted, in my opinion. And I remember first hearing it and my thoughts were like, yeah, no. In a way, how Kobe portrays it kind of makes him seem like he was the lesser evil in the whole Kobe Bryant Shaq split. Now, did the series of events happen? that he mentioned. Yes, yes they did. Kobe Bryant was a free agent that summer after opting out of the final year of his contract. And Kobe Bryant was definitely looking at the Chicago Bulls. Why? It's a simple answer, why? Because yes, like Kobe said, he didn't want that unfair narrative stuck to him. But let's not act like Kobe Bryant didn't want to play with Shaq, period, 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 under any circumstance. He was tired of Shaquille O'Neal. Kobe and Shaq are definitely two people that, you know, didn't give a damn if they like each other, but they are there to carry out business, not a friendship. And they could still go about playing the game of basketball and while hating each other's guts. But in that 2003 summer with Kobe Bryant 
getting into a world of trouble with the sexual assault allegations. Everything went left. Everything went spiraling out of control with their relationship real fast. Zero to 100 real quick. Kobe Bryant, in his rare moment of vulnerability, folded like a lawn chair in his questioning and police interrogation and snitched on Shaq, stating that Shaq had marital affairs as well while trying to validate or soften his wrongdoing, rather, because he got caught. Kobe Bryant was a guy that's, you know, usually very calculated, extremely level-headed, that thinks things out very thoroughly before speaking or acting. Uh, and even in his youth, he was like that. And this was a major moment of weakness, and he succumbed to it. That tells me how nervous and frightened he was in that moment. A thousand things racing through his head. His image, his career, his family, all teetering on the edge of a cliff. After whatever riff was there between Kobe Bryant and Shaq already, you bet your bottom dollar, it widened substantially. And they hated each other's guts, whether they would ever publicly admit it or not. Obviously, Kobe Bryant has passed away now, God rest his soul. So he can't speak on it anymore. And in his passing, Shaq will not say anything but nice things about Kobe Bryant and deflect, and he will quickly deflect any commentary about him and Kobe feuding. But when Kobe says, oh, you know, once I found out you requested a trade and you were getting moved off to Miami, I was like, oh, no, I can't leave. And Shaq can't leave LA. I have to come in. I have to be there for LA. Now that you left, I have to be the savior. I got to save the Los Angeles Lakers. They can't, they can't have both of us gone. Please, 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 please. I don't want to hear that. Please, save that. Save that. Trying to paint it as some kind of hero story, <laughs> I ain't buying that. There was nothing heroic about how all that went down. Kobe knew he didn't really want to leave the Lakers. He just didn't want Shaq there. And yes, he was so adamant about not playing with Shaq that he decided to look elsewhere, but at the same time, knowing that he had a stranglehold on the organization and were pulling their leg to make a firm decision on who do you want? Because if you're gonna keep me, then you have to get rid of him. I don't know if he talked to upper management very directly and told them I'm not coming back if Shaq is here, point blank, period, or if it was his agent. But regardless, anybody can read the room over the season. Everybody knew it was going to come down to one or the other. That there was no way these two guys were going to be back on the court on the same team again. Everybody knew it. Kobe didn't have to say it directly. Everybody knew it. You can read the room, read the atmosphere. Especially how the season ended and Kobe shooting the Lakers out of contention in the 2004 NBA Finals, Buss knew, Buss knew, even in a very wild scenario where Shaq would have took lesser money to stay, he would have still moved off Shaquille O'Neal just to keep the younger Kobe Bryant. So while I do like the fact that Shaq brought up the conversation between him and the front office about wanting to keep Kobe and not pay him the money he was looking for, just realize that it really wasn't about the money. It was about keeping Kobe. And keeping Kobe meant you was not going to be there, Shaquille O'Neal. Whether Shaq requested a trade or not, he was going to be traded. And you know how these things go with PR cover-ups and putting the information out publicly, things like that. I mean, it, it, it could have very well actually been a situation 
where management straight up told Shaq, hey, you know, uh, we can only keep one of you guys. And we're deciding to keep Kobe because that's the only way we're going to be able to keep him. And Shaq could have been like him and his agent. Uh, me and my agent, we're, we're just going to put out a statement that I'm requesting a trade. So it doesn't look like the Lakers were just getting rid of me against my will, especially for Kobe Bryant. So we're, 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 we're going to put out a statement saying I requested the trade. Kobe Bryant forced all of that to happen as indirect as it may have been. But this notion of what's going on, Shaq is leaving, oh no, I got to return, I got to be the savior. Nah, nah, cut it out. If he really cared about saving LA, I'm just saying he probably should have took a different approach to those 2004 NBA Finals Instead of trying to nab the finals MVP and show people that he was the leader and the best player on the team. I'm just being honest. Some of you might not like to hear it, but I'm just being honest. Hey, it's hey, it's part of his career. It's part of his legacy. These things happen. I talk about it. And before the Kobe people start to attack me, you should know that Kobe Bryant is my favorite player of all time. But I keep it 100 with everybody. I try to be as unbiased as possible. Some people come here acting like, you know, I never watched Kobe Bryant play his career before, this, that, and the third. Listen, I watched every damn, damn near every damn second of this guy's entire career. Over and over again, recorded videos, study tape, everything. Kobe was my guy, still is my guy. Love Kobe to death. And you will be hard pressed, hard pressed. To find a more honest, knowledgeable, and unbiased Kobe Bryant fan on YouTube than me. That's 100% facts. I appreciate you guys for stepping in. Thank you for everything. Check out our Kobe Bryant playlist. And i catch you on the next one. We out, baby.